Well, it was the Financial Times. It was that's the very same paper that broke the story that Coots had closed my account because of insufficient funds. Well, they were wrong about that. But the Times got the leak of the Financial Conduct Authority's report, and they put it today on their front page. FCA report finds no evidence of banks closing accounts for political leanings. Well, frankly, I didn't know really whether to laugh or to cry. And all of this ahead of the release at midday of this full FCA report. UK payment accounts, access and closures. Now, you would have thought, wouldn't you, that all they had to do was to read that vile 40-page document that Coots prepared on me to realise my account had been closed because I did not align with the value of the bank. Yet we learn later on that apparently my case wasn't included. But aside from that, they discovered that nobody, no, absolutely nobody, had had their accounts closed as a result of their views. Well, I could give you a list as long as your arm of people who've been debanked because of their political views and associations. Let's begin, of course, with the founder and organiser of Leave.eu, Aaron Banks and Andy Wigmore. Yes, Banks had his business accounts closed and Wigmore has had both his personal and business accounts closed. What about Richard Tice? now leader of Reform UK. Richard, who was an MEP with the Brexit Party, has found himself rejected for loans uh, because of pure political reasons, and that for his business. Extraordinarily, Kevin Saunders, former boss of Border Force over in Calais, he's had his account closed, he thinks because he appears regularly on GB News. Grant Shapps, Cabinet Minister, had his and other family accounts closed. Toby Young of the Free Speech Union, debanked, taken out of the payment system, PayPal. And of course, the Reverend Richard Fothergill, who objected to the LGBTQ plus propaganda he was getting from his building society, only to have his account closed. What we see today from the FCA is a total whitewash. It is a complete and utter farce. But then I guess asking people who are biased to examine whether there is bias is probably not going to get you much of a result. But what's annoying is this. The FCA is the most important regulator in this country. Why? Well, because financial services are not just the biggest employer, not just the biggest earner of invisible income from abroad. It is Britain's biggest industry, and it used to be the jewel in the crown. And many of us believe with Brexit, this was the chance for our financial sector to really get back to where it ought to be as the leading global financial centre. But the fish can rot from the head down. And frankly, my view is that the FCA has now become utterly politicised, filled up with people who frankly have no experience of financial markets whatsoever. Oh, but they're very good, very good indeed, at pushing the diversity and inclusion agenda onto our banks, onto our insurance companies and onto the whole industry. Now, the response to all of this from Andrew Griffiths, the city minister, today simply wasn't good enough. He reiterated that nobody should have their accounts closed for holding a perfectly legal view. Well, yes, but the Treasury, the government, has real power here. And I think we need a complete clean-out of these political appointees that are there within the FCA. Let's start again with people that actually understand financial markets and that come into something and promise absolute political neutrality. I'm asking you, should we sack the regulator? Give me your views, make sure they're clean, please, to farage at gbnews.com. Well, joining me down the line is David Davis, Conservative Member of Parliament for House and Price and Howden in Yorkshire. David, I was talking about the politicisation of the FCA, and we could go on, I guess, and talk about the civil service. Just want to show you a couple of pictures of the people that now run the FCA. Let's start with the CEO, Nikhil Rathi. Um, and here he is. He is the CEO of the Financial Conduct Authority. And he and the executive director, Sheldon Mills, these are the two, these are the two 
most prominent people that run the Financial Conduct Authority. Now, I've checked a bit, David, into their backgrounds, but I think you've done a little bit more work on this than I have. Have we politicised the financial market regulator? Well, I'll start by saying, Nigel, I'm feeling a bit left out. I was the only person in your list. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm quite jealous now. The, 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 the simple truth is that either the agency is stupid or incompetent, careless, or doing something to support its friends in the establishment. If you talk about politicization being here, is a, uh, a, a basically an exercise of the establishment protecting its own. I mean, Mr. Rathi, Nicola Rathi, I think, if I remember correctly, was private secretary to uh, Gordon Brown. He then went on to uh, do some other jobs inside the civil service. He then got uh, a job in the LS, the London Stock Exchange. He then came back into the system. These jobs rotate amongst people who are the London establishment. And what you're seeing is the outcome of that. What you're seeing is, oh, well, you know, these are our people. We can't, we can't be too critical of them. I mean, it is inconceivable that any professional organization could look at the facts, the facts with respect to you, or Arab banks, all these other people, uh, and, and say, well, there's nothing wrong here. You know, and they very, very carefully designed their terms. They said, well, we're only going to look from June 21 to 22, which sort of cuts you out. Uh, you know, we're only going to look at people who are specifically uh, uh, move for their political views, as stated by the banks themselves. Well, who's going to do that? It's like asking exactly. a burglar. Exactly. They say to the banks, they say to the banks, have you debanked anybody for political reasons? The banks say no, and they say that's OK. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's barking mad, frankly. You know, and, and these are, you know, these are not people off the street. I mean, Mr. Rathi's paid over half a million a year. You know, his notional salary, I think, is about 455, but you add, a, yeah. add the package up, it's over half a million. You know, he's, you know, he ought to be able, you know, frankly, my country solicitor ought to be able to answer this question, and he's not paid half a million a year. So, you know, th these people ought to be on top of their job. And they're not. And the fact that they have failed in this way, and frankly today are effectively admitting they failed. I mean, they've been saying, oh, well, we didn't do this and we didn't do that and we've got to come back to it. Sorry, too late. If you are the judge, jury, something like this, when you come out with a conclusion, it should stand up. It should not be, oh, well, this is just our view along the way. So is it time, David, to replace these people with new personnel and to get a regulator that the industry, the country and the world can respect? Well, yes, it is, because for several reasons. I mean, this is the latest of a series of failures by the FCA. I mean, FCA and its predecessor um, were useless in the 2008 crisis. Uh, they got the whole story wrong. Uh, in the LIBOR scandal, they basically convicted all the wrong people and yet again let off the bosses. I mean, it was, if you look at that scandal, it was the juniors who got sacked. Nobody who was senior knew about it, um, let alone went to prison. So all of, all of the behavior of the FCA, and by the way, they've got some quite expert people working for them, but in the lower ranks, yeah. you know, all the behavior of the FCA is that of an organization who sees its function as propping up the financial establishment. And that's the opposite reason for what it's there. No. So I'm afraid I'm, I, think, I think Mr. Rathi uh, is simply, uh, his, his prospects, put it mildly, are dim. David Davis, plain spoken as ever. Thank you.